Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. All right, welcome back. We are in Matthew 13, but we're looking at Luke's elaboration of what Matthew briefly refers to of Jesus' visit to his hometown. Matthew told us that Jesus was rejected there and that Jesus lamented that a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own people. Um, Matthew also told us that Jesus uh, didn't do any miracles there because of their unbelief. So we got a general overview, but Luke goes into more detail. And that's why we're looking at Luke chapter 4. Now, Remember that Jesus read from Isaiah chapter 61. It wasn't in chapter and verse back in his day. They gave him a scroll. He unscrolled it, you know, until it got to that section. And he read about himself. And he revealed very plainly that he was anointed by God to do numerous things. Uh, I'm reading from Luke 4 and verse number 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. What for? Because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. So Jesus was anointed for we could say miraculous things. I mean, the recovery of the sight to the blind is certainly a miraculous thing, and setting free those who are oppressed, that sounds like you know people who are demonized. Uh, that takes the power of God. That's why Jesus had to have the Spirit upon him. Remember, that happened at his baptism in the uh, River Jordan when the Spirit descended upon him in the form of the dove. That's when Jesus entered into his ministry, and that's when we begin to see him operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the question. Why would God, Jesus, need to be anointed with God, the Holy Spirit? Well, it could only be if God, the Son, uh, emptied himself or stripped himself of certain prerogatives that he had by virtue of the fact that he was God. And he was then anointed by the Holy Spirit. He operated as a man, although he was God, fully God, he operated as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. Now, just because the Holy Spirit anointed him, does that mean that uh, everywhere Jesus went, there were these fantastic miracles? No, we're just reading in uh, in Luke 4 about his ministry in Nazareth. Now, think about it. If Jesus spent three decades there, if his, if his father, mother, brothers, sisters were there, if there's anywhere that he'd want to be successful, if, if he'd want to, you know, uh, touch people's lives, that would have been the place. And so if Jesus could just work a miracle anytime he wanted to, if, you know, he would have done it there right? I mean, come on. That would be the place he'd want to do miracles. But we read that he didn't do miracles there because of their unbelief. So sometimes uh, unbelief can hinder the anointing. Sure. Anyone who's a minister of the gospel knows that. And in fact, any, any, anyone who's serving the Lord and trying to help others knows that. You know, you, you, you might be anointed uh, to, to preach the gospel. That doesn't mean everybody gets saved who hears the gospel. In fact, that could mean that no one gets saved because their unbelief hinders the blessing of the anointing that God is trying to, you know, minister through you. And that's what happened in Nazareth. There was unbelief, there was skepticism. They said, okay, hometown boy, we heard some miracles you did over in Capernaum, let's show us your stuff here now. And Jesus then related these two stories that we've you know, already read about two other prophets back in the days of Elijah and, Eli and Elisha who were not received by their own people. Okay, and the reaction was uh, really incredible here. Let's read the reaction. This is down in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 28. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. You know, wow, this is their hometown boy. This is a guy they've known for decades more than likely. And verse 29, and they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went his way. And so 
Would you agree with me that Jesus was rejected in his hometown of Nazareth? Oh, he certainly was. We've been reading in chapter 12 and in chapter 13 now uh, of, 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 of Matthew, of course, in Luke at this moment, Jesus was rejected by the leaders of Israel, in general by the people of Israel, and now we're reading about his rejection in his hometown. I mean, Jesus was just rejected and despised of men. Here was God in the flesh. And so it shouldn't surprise us, should it, when we are rejected and when we find that we have no honor amongst our own uh, family members in our own hometown, you know, if they've known you a long time and then suddenly you change and become a new creation in Christ, they're very skeptical about any transformation and they don't believe it and they don't receive it. And oftentimes there's a pride issue there. Who do you think you are telling us, you know, we raised you or, you know, we've always known you. What are you telling us now? And, and, and people just aren't receptive to those whom they've known, even those who have dramatically changed. All right, so that's part of the sufferings of Christ is facing rejection. I'm sorry to tell you that, but that is the fact. I've been to Israel a couple times and been to the site of ancient Nazareth and been to those cliffs. And I'm telling you, uh, if they threw Jesus off, you know, that would have been the end of Jesus. But it wasn't his time, praise God. And so I believe that this was a clearly a supernatural deliverance uh, for Jesus. He said, it said he passed through their midst in verse number 30. I don't believe Jesus said, oh, uh, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. You know, I mean, they were there to throw him over so he couldn't have just pardoned and excused himself out of that. They were ready to toss him over the cliff. <laughs> okay, and uh, gracious, uh, it, it seems like he disappeared. Okay, and God is able to make people disappear. God is able to um, blind their eyes and so forth, and God is able to deliver us from any danger. And so take heart in that. If, uh, if God wants you to stay, nobody can take you away. And if God wants to take you away, nobody can make you stay. He is in control. Okay, I had a lovely time talking about this. Can't wait to get back into Matthew. So I will see you next time.